Dear friends, you have reached the Ask Father series here at the Fatima Center. I am Father Paul MacDonald of the Diocese of St. Catharines, and this is our question. I will just read it as it presents itself. Uh, Dear Father, I have a question regarding men wearing jeans. Does it constitute uh, a sin when men wear them? Do jeans fall in one of the categories of fashions which Our Lady of Fatima is warning us about? So let's begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Rosary of Fatima, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So is it a sin to wear jeans? I'm going to put an interpretation on the question uh, and then return to the broader question. So is it a sin to wear jeans to church? May I distinguish uh, between a working uh, person coming to church on the way to work and he's wearing jeans because he's a farmer or he's wearing some kind of coveralls because he's a mechanic or or she's wearing some kind of you know stuff for people that work in a bake shop and it's... You know, you wouldn't wear it on the street, but, uh, but it's, you know, it's modest other than that. Uh, so can I distinguish between on your way to work, stopping for a visit to our Lord in the tabernacle or taking part in the Holy Mass? And I would say uh, it's okay to wear work clothes to, mat, to Mass. Uh, I do remember the poignant image uh, painted verbally by the great Anne Roach Muggridge of her father coming from the coal mine on the way to Mass. And they, you know, they, this was the only mass they could catch. And being at the back of the church, and all you could see were their eyes and their teeth because they were all covered in black dust and they didn't really go into the church. They kind of just hung out at the back. And what a beautiful image of the working man, um, the working person on, uh, you know, coming from work. So, but yet at Sunday, if we're not like in the emergency services or we have some other serious reason, is it not a good idea out of honor for our Lord to dress up a little better according to our means, obviously, uh, no prejudice against the poor man, uh, you know, we, we, but can we not do our best? Just as for a job interview, depending on the nature of the job for which we are interviewing, that we would dress in a respectful manner and not have a goofy slogan, or worse, on our t-shirt, okay? So Our Lady is not against fabrics, normal non-translucent fabrics, okay? So no, it's not a sin uh, as such to, to wear jeans. I've, it's pretty clear what our, lo- our Lady was worried about. Certain fashions which will be introduced which will offend God greatly. I believe these words were reported to us via uh, uh, Saint Jacinta. The most obvious one against modesty is exposing the human form so that it becomes a temptation to others. So, in other words, if the clothing is immodest in that sense, in in which it gives bad thoughts uh, to people, and, you know, you might think this is a sexist thing, but I'm sorry, uh, men are more vulnerable to this than women. I'm not excusing the men, they can just wear whatever they want. Uh, But the human animal, the, the human being made by God, the man is more susceptible in this department. So although both men and women must observe modesty, yes, like it or not, the woman has to, who raises the whole tone of a civilization in any case, a great honor to her, must observe certain rules of modesty, of, of, of not revealing what should not be revealed. Now, this does not mean wearing a gunny sack so that you can't tell, you know, from a distance whether it's a man or a woman. A woman should dress in such a way as to be identifiable as a woman, and a man should dress in such a way as to be identifiable as a man, but not revealing too much. Uh, I'm not going to go into greater detail than that. Figure it out, what causes temptation in other people. So that's one measure of modesty, the one that, for those of us who have read a little bit about this, this is the one that occurs right away, right? Is that, you know, certain styles will be introduced. So back in when Jacinta would have said that, which is around 1919, 1920, the Roaring Twenties are about to start, and we're off to the races uh, for the 
uh, the great so-called sexual revolution and, uh, and all the damage that does t uh, to the family and to souls. Uh, so for the protection of chastity, people have to dress proper properly according to the uh, circumstances. And that's where sin comes in. Uh, there are other uh, measures of modesty which are not as grave or as, as, as crucial, but they still are, depending on the circumstances in, in which we find ourselves to dress in a respectful and appropriate way uh, with due measure. That's where the word modesty comes from, from the Latin modestia, the, with due measure according to time, person, sit, pl uh, place, circumstances, and so on. So the mere wearing of uh, jeans as such uh, is normally uh, not sinful, uh, but we all must observe. Uh, it's, it's a case of fraternal charity towards the other person and respect for ourselves and above all for our Creator and Lord. So may God give us the grace and strength to resist these fashions which have been introduced, which God is extremely offended by, because they lead people to sin and to hell. And so why would we do that? So may God strengthen us uh, in this matter. You can read a lot more about these things if you were to visit Fatima.org, Fatima.org, and uh, just incredible, vast resources on this matter and so many other matters touching on the faith and on prayer and, of course, on the integral Fatima message with nothing added and nothing taken away. That is the raison d'etre of this apostolate, the entire Fatima message not watered down. And also you will be able to find the Ask Father part where you can leave a question which we will be delighted to provide the very best answer that we can. So dear friends, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, now you and all your loved ones, now and forever and ever. Thank you.